Welcome back, everyone. Hey, do you guys remember that small independent movie that came out in 2017? It was from a tiny film studio called Marvel. I am referring to the cult classic Thor Ragnarok, directed by the very, very talented Taika Waititi. All kidding aside, he is a very quirky director, and he has helmed such projects like Eagle vs. Shark, Boy, the film version of What We Do in the Shadows, and the absolutely wonderful Hunt for the Wilder People. The aforementioned Thor Ragnarok, <laughs> a four, Thor, and the 2019 film Jojo Rabbit. He has also directed episodes of television like the BBC comedy The Inbetweeners, the TV adaptation of What We Do in the Shadows, and the much beloved season one finale of The Mandalorian. So, why am I blowing this guy so hard? Well, because I'm a big fan of his work, and I think he's very talented. Also, being a Native American, Taika is also indigenous and a director, and that's amazing in an industry that is still slow to move toward people of color being in meaningful positions. Just to let you know, Taika is a Maori from New Zealand. Taika has also done some work as a producer, most notably on the FX hit Reservation Dog, which also employs natives in the film industry, not just as actors, but also directors, cinema photographers, a whole bunch of positions. And I think that's great. Anyway, this is why I love Taika Waititi so much. But the reason for this story is that he's just been signed to adapt an Alejandro Jodorowsky much acclaimed space opera, The Incall, into a feature film. I know what you're thinking. Who the hell is Alejandro Jodorowsky? Well, boys and girls, I'm glad you asked. Jodorowsky is a Chilean director born in 1929. He's directed such movies as Fando and Liz, El Topo, and The Holy Mountain. Jodorowsky is a little out there as a film director, opting for the expressionistic, and he adores addressing taboos in film. Also, Jodorowsky is probably more famous for the movie he didn't direct, but had been attached to. You see, Jodorowsky wanted to adapt Frank Herbert's monumental and beloved sci-fi novel Dune into a feature film. Now, there's a documentary called Jodorowsky's Dune, which is much better than what I can do, but I'll give you the bullet points. And trust me, this all ties into the news of Watiti and the Incall. With the success of The Holy Mountain, Jodorowsky was asked by someone, I'm not sure who, I'm guessing either an agent or a studio person, which project he wanted to do next. Jodorowsky wanted Dune, and he wanted all the challenges that it would present. Some of his ideas were really interesting, like casting Hollywood legend Orson Welles as the Baron Harkonnen, and artist Salvador Dali as the Emperor. He was even prepared to direct his own teenage son, well, teenage in 1970, Brontus Jodorowsky. He also hired Swiss artist H.I. Giger, or Geiger, I'm never sure how that's pronounced, but you know who I'm talking about, the dude from Alien. French artist Jean Girard, who goes by the name Mobius, to create the look of his vision of Dune. Jodorowsky definitely had his work cut out for him, given this was 1970, and it seemed like he wanted to at least match, if not outdo, Stanley Kubrick's masterpiece, 2001, which had come out two years previous. This would have been a Herculean undertaking, but Alejandro Jodorowsky was definitely game, even willing to put his son Brontus through hell in order to make him the perfect Paul Atreides. Now, I normally don't do this since I like the sound of my own voice. I mean, this is why I have a YouTube channel, but some of these concepts and designs are truly works of art and you should see them. So I'm gonna shut up for a little bit. As you can see, this was pretty revolutionary and potentially divisive work. And not to mention that Jodorowsky intended on changing the ending of it to fit his vision on how Dune should have ended. It 
wasn't the worst ending ever, but it definitely would have been not have been Dune. Basically, Paul would have been killed by Fade, and he somehow merges with everybody, and everybody merges with the planet, and they all yell, I am Mwadib, and the planet becomes sentient, moves out of its orbit, and goes around spreading the word of Mwadib to the rest of the galaxy. Um, yeah, so not not what Herbert was going for. But Yodorowsky felt justified in his decision because it was his version of it, his vision. And well, he had an interesting euphemism about it, and I'm not going to repeat it because I don't really like that word, but just watch the damn documentary and you'll see what he says. Anyway, ultimately his project failed for a couple of reasons. First, he could not secure financing and distribution because Yodorowsky wanted to make a six to eight hour movie. Now keep in mind, this was 1970. And sure, there were long movies out there, Gone with the Wind being nearly four hours in runtime, but that was not the no norm. The home video market wouldn't be a thing until well into the next decade, and there were no premium cable channels or streaming service willing to make Dune into a limited series like today. Yodorowsky's Dune would have lived or died by ticket sales, and no one wanted a chance financing his vision of the sci-fi epic. Also, despite 2001 having been released two years prior, and pioneering an incredible amount of special, special effects, especially for the day, Dune would have been on a completely different level, and the technology hadn't been invented yet. It took a different space opera to help to start to pioneer some of these special effects. This, of course, would have been the 1981 classic, Battle Beyond the Stars. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. That one's for you, Matt. I'm talking about Star Wars, of course, the original. And a film was, this film was also influenced by Frank Herbert's classic. Dune would eventually get made without Yodorowsky in 1984 with the prolific director, Alan Smithy. Seriously, this guy has a lot of films, and he seems to be immortal. I mean, all throughout the decades. Huh. <laughs> That's a bit of a joke. Alan Smithy is a pseudonym for if a director doesn't want their name attached to a project. The movie was actually directed by Indian and cult phenomenon David Lynch. It too was divisive, and not what Herbert had intended. But being Gen X, I gotta say, I love this movie. Flaws and all. But an interesting thing happened with all the ideas that Yodorowsky had for his vision of Dune. Well, let's just say from the ashes of his fallen movie arose the phoenix named The Incall. It was a graphic novel. Yodorowsky again collaborated with Mobius on this project. It is phenomenal and weird and completely nuts and I love it so much. And so do a lot of other people. You can see the influence of this graphic novel in movies like The Fifth Element, and I would even say Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones. I got that part from Quinn's Ideas. Awesome YouTube channel. Check him out. So this was an interesting situation because it's really doubtful that Yodorowsky's Dune would have turned out the way he envisioned it. But Alejandro and Mobius used all that creative drive to form something that did work and has influenced so many people in the comic, TV, and film industry. So now the question is, how do you make a movie from a project with such an insane writer and artist? Well, I'll tell you how. You get a fucking insane director and that's what, just what happened. Luckily, Taika is perfect for this adaptation. Not only does he have the talent as a director, he's got that spark of either genius or insanity. I can never tell which. If you look at his quirky humor in Hunt for the Wilder People and his flair for the visually interesting in Thor Ragnarok, I think you'll agree with me. He's had a lifelong love of the visual arts, and this is going to serve him well. Now, I have no idea when they're going to start filming this movie because he is working on everything. Every project he is directing. I'll give you some examples. He's got Thor Love and Thunder coming up. He's doing a movie called Next Goal Wins. He's doing a sequel to the film version, What We Do in the Shadows, and a Flash Gordon remake. He also has two animated uh, doll shows coming up on Netflix, not to mention acting engagements, and his continued collaborations with The Mandalorian and Reservation Dogs. 
Oh, I forgot to write this down, but I just remembered. He's also supposed to make a Star Wars movie. Yeah. But at some point, he's going to direct this crazy space opera. And it could turn out bad, but if it works, this could be really cool. As you can tell, I'm pretty excited about this, and I think you should be as well. I mean, this could garner a new film universe if it goes off the way everybody hopes. As always, fare thee well, my friends, and take care.